class notes are in our Google Classroom. So we'll be doing these together as a class. And uh, you can take notes. You can print those notes and fill those out on there, uh, however you want to do that. But remember, in this class, all of your notes are usable on assignments and tests. Any, any notes you got, you can use them on tests. I'm good with that. Uh, it's a lot easier in mathematics to have uh, formulas and examples and all that kind of stuff in front of you. So when you need to work a problem, oh, I've got an example problem like that. Let me see. Oh, yeah, that's how you do it. Perfect. And then you can do it on your test. So we will uh, go over this imaginary complex numbers notes together. And you can take notes however you like to on that. So let me put it up on the screen and we will get started with it. Algebra 2, Unit 2C. This is just really just kind of an add-on to uh, Unit 2 from first semester. But imaginary and complex numbers notes. So let's talk about imaginary numbers. The imaginary unit, I, in mathematics, I is a number. It's an imaginary number, but it's a number. And it's defined as the square root of negative 1. The square root of negative 1. That's what I equals. It's imaginary because we can't take the square root of a negative number. It doesn't exist because the square root of a number, if you should be able to multiply it back by itself and square it to get back to the number, right? So when we have the number 9, we can take the square root of 9 because the square root of 9 could be 3 or negative 3. And if we square 3 or negative 3, it'll get us back to 9. So 9 square root is 3. 3 times 3 gets us back to 9. There's not a number we can do for negative 1. Negative 1 would have to be negative 1 times a positive 1. You can't square that. Those are two different numbers. So I is defined as the square root of negative 1. It's a pure imaginary number. is written in the form of like a, a number and I, like AI, right? Where, well, let's, where, let's, let's call it BI because A is usually your real part of the number. So BI, where B is the real number and I is the imaginary number. So we could have a number like 7I, 7 times the square root of negative 1. So BI is the real number and imaginary part. So let's talk about the powers of I. So I equals the square root of negative 1, which is just equal to I, right? It's the same thing. But let's talk about I squared. The, use the pattern to simplify this. Uh, the ACT loves to put problems like this on it also using I. So I squared is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Right, because it's squaring i. When you square something, you multiply it by itself. Well, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 is just equal to negative 1. If you take two identical square roots and multiply them together, you get the number that's under the rational, negative 1. So i squared is equal to negative 1. That's very important. We're going to use that a lot in our mathematical calculations, that any time you square an i, it's just equal to negative 1, because it's a square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Uh, the i to the third power is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Right? Three times. It's basically this times this. Because the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, just that part, we know that equals negative 1. We just calculated that above times that. And that equals i. So it equals negative i. Because it's negative 1 times i is what that is going to equal to. And to the fourth power, we've got the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. So if we look at the first, that's negative 1, negative 1. So that's the same as negative 1 times negative 1 or just 1. So i to the fourth equals 1. Then you get to i to the fifth. i to the fifth, the same thing as i to the fourth times i to the first. Because of our rules of exponents, i to the fifth, the same as i to the fourth times i to the first. Well, i to the fourth is one, so it's one times i. So it just equals i again. That's the same thing as one times i. 
if we have this i to the sixth, that's the same thing as i to the fourth times i squared. I to the fourth, again, is just one. So it just equals i squared. And what does i squared equal? It equals negative one. So this equals negative one because that's the same thing as taking one times i squared. Same thing with here. This is the same as i to the fourth times i to the third. So it just equals i to the third. So that just equals i squared. That just equals i. So i to the third, we calculate up here, is negative i. And then i the fourth times i the fourth. Well, that just equals one because it's one times one. So if you notice the pattern, this is an important thing because this is what the ACT likes to throw at you. If you notice the pattern, one, two, three, four, this is five, six, seven, eight. It runs the exact same answers. I, negative one, negative I, and one. So it goes in multiples of four. So if you can figure out, like, here's I to the 15th, right? Where does that fit in the pattern? Well, you'd have uh, I, I the 4th, uh, I the 8th, I the 12th, I the 16th. Oh, so I the 16th would be this one because they run in patterns. I the 4th, I the 8th, I the 12th, I the 16th. So this is one less. It's going to back up there. It's going to equal negative I because it's the same as I to the 3rd because it's I to the 4th times I to the 4th times I to the 4th times I to the 3rd. And all those i to the fourth equal one. If we jump up to i to the power of 62, where does that fit? Well, how many i to the fourth is that? Right? So how many times can you divide 4 into 62? Well, 62 is not divisible by 4 evenly, but 60 is. 4 times 15. 4 times 15. So this is i to the 60th times i the second i to the 60th is the is one of these so it's one times i squared so it's the same as i squared negative one i to the 62nd power is negative one so would negative one be equal to negative square root of one so if you're talking about here let's just turn this over okay here's use this word so you're talking about i to the negative one power? Is that what you're asking? If that's what you're asking about, remember how negative x was. Oh, you're saying like negative i? Yes. So a negative i... Since i, that's the same as i, i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So these would be the same thing. For this, remember with the power of exponents, that's the same thing as 1 over i. When you raise something to a negative exponent, to make it a positive exponent, you move it on the other side of the denominator and make it a denominator instead. So, But you're not talking about that. You're talking about this. Negative i would be negative square roots of negative 1. But if we had this as an answer, we would want to simplify it and write this. We always want to simplify it to just say I. Anytime this is in our answer, we want to simplify that and write I instead. So that is the simplest way to write that in mathematics. Very good question. All right, so it wants us to simplify the expressions below. So we've got some sample problems to work here. So the thing, first thing we have is 4i times 7i. Before i is times 7i, this, this is the real number part of it, kind of. So you've got 4 times 7, and you have i times i. you got 4i times 7i. So 4 times 7 is 28. i times i is negative 1. So this equals negative 28. I times I, the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, that's just equal to negative 1. So anytime we end up with an I squared, so that's, a, that's the same thing as 28I squared. 28I squared, that's the same as negative 28. So this would be our 
simplified answer since I squared is equal to negative one. Let's look at this negative four I two I negative nine I. So first let's multiply the numbers together. Negative four times two times negative nine. Oh, negative. That's a that's a negative. Put that in parentheses. Times negative nine, and then we've got i times i times i. So we have is negative four times two is negative eight. Times negative nine, and i times i times i is i to the third power. So let's simplify this as much as we can there. So negative 8 times negative 9 is a positive 72. And then i to the third power, looking at our little sample sheet up here, i to the third power is negative i. So this would be negative 72i in its most simplified form. Because negative i is equal to negative one times i negative one times i negative the the coefficient is negative one if you have negative i negative one times i so negative one times 72 is negative 72 and we have the i and then once you're i is understood as a negative i is not a negative by itself uh it is the square root of a negative so it's imaginary when you have two of them, it, it becomes a negative, negative one. But if we just have i, it's a square root of a negative number, which is not real. So, but when you get to a negative one or negative i, that's when the negative becomes a real negative. It comes out front. Let's look at this one. Two i to the third power times five i. So that's basically saying two i times two i times two i times 5i, right? Because you have 2i to the third power, which means you multiply it by itself three times. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, times 5 is 40. i times i times i times i is i to the fourth power. So we got 40 times i to the fourth power. i to the fourth power is just 1. So this just equals 40 because it's 40 times 1. 40 times 1. So that simplifies to just 40. Looks like a mess. That's a that's a pretty funky way to write 40, but that, that equals 40. Let's look at this. This is a, an interesting one. We've got i square roots of 3 squared. Stop the recording. I know in this video I continue working these problems, but I've gone back and reviewed it, and I've worked the next three problems incorrectly. What? So we're cutting that out of this video, and we're putting in the replacement to correct this because i want you to understand how to do it correctly so let me uh put that back on the screen and let's see how to do this right here's these next three problems that i worked on. i'm gonna i'm gonna cross those out because these were done incorrectly and we're going to redo this on a different sheet of paper all right so copying the first problem down let me, let me put it up here i had uh i Square roots of three squared times negative eight i squared. And when I worked this originally, I moved that inside the parentheses and made an error there, and that doesn't work. So this is the same as i square roots of three time times i square roots of three, right? Because it's squared. When you square something, you multiply it by itself. Well, this one is also squared. So I have to multiply it by itself. Negative 8i times negative 8i. All right, so let's simplify this. Let's take these and multiply them times each other first. i times i is i squared. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. So this is really 3i squared. Negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64. I times I is I squared. So we've got 3I squared times 64I squared. 
So that equals three times 64 is 192. I squared times I squared is I to the fourth. As we know, I to the fourth equals one. So this means 192 times one, which means the answer is 192. 192. So mess up the first time. We're going to get it right and make sure it's right. Okay. Let's look at the, the next problem, number seven right here, because I worked that one incorrectly also. Number seven says, oh, square root of negative 18 times the square root of negative 10. Okay, multiplying those times each other, square root of negative 18. So the best thing to do first is to rewrite these. And I, I didn't do that before. I tried working it all in there, and I messed it up. So square root of negative 18 is the same thing as I times the square root of 18. I can pull the negative one out of there because that's the same thing. The square root of negative 18 is the same thing as negative 1 times 18, right? Negative 1 times 18 is negative 18. So I can take the square root of negative 1, make that an I, and just leave the 18 under the square root. So square root of negative 1 comes out as I. So that's the same as this. Same thing here. So that would be this times I square roots of 10. So I times I is I squared. And we can put the square root of 18 and 10 under the same radical. They're being multiplied by each other. So it's the same thing as I squared times the square root of 180. All right. So that helps a little bit now. So 180, you can break that down in a lot of ways. The square root of 180. If you're not sure what nice squared numbers come out of that, we know that 9 comes out of that. 9 times 20. 9 times 20 is 180. So we know the square root of 9 is 3. So it's 3 times the square root of 20. Well, 20 is the same as 4 times 5. And we can take the square root of, two, of 4, which is 2, so you got 3 times 2 times the square root of 5. 3 times 2 is 6. So this is the same as I squared 6 square roots of 5. We know that I squared equals negative 1. So this actually equals negative 6 square roots of 5. I was close when I worked it the first time. I had 6 square roots of 5, but I lost a negative by not converting those I's. I should have pulled the I's out because they ended up disappearing. And ended up being wrong. So we want that to be correct. Now let's look at the, the third problem that I messed up. Square root of negative 24 times the square root of negative 3 times the square root of negative 2. Okay, that's the last problem. So again, if we rewrite this as I square roots of 24 times i square roots of 3 times i square roots of 2. So i times i times i is i to the third. And under here, we got 24 times 3 times 2. Right? Taking all those numbers and just putting them under the same radical. Since they're being multiplied together, we can do that. So that's the same as i to the third. So 24 times 3 is 72. 72 times 2 is 144. Hey, that's a nice number because the square root of 144 is just 12. 12i to the third. Okay, so what is i to the third? Remember, i equals... I to the first just equals I. I to the second equals negative 1. I to the third equals negative I. I to the fourth equals 1. So I to the third is the same thing as negative I. So this is the same as negative 12I. 
That's our simplest answer, and that is correct. Where on here we ended up with an eight I. I don't know how I got that. Something got messed up in there, but this is the answer. Now you have the corrections. You may continue your video. It's a little complicated. We can follow that. Look at page two of our notes. Let's talk about a complex number. This was dealing with imaginary numbers, just pure imaginary numbers. A complex number is a polynomial that's made up of real and imaginary. It is written in the form A plus BI. A plus BI. For example, it could be 4 plus 3I. So because 4 is a real number and 3I is a pure imaginary number, they are not like terms. We can't say that's 7I. That would be like having 4 plus 3X. We could not combine the 3X and the 4 and say it's 7X because these are not like terms. This is the imaginary part. This is the real part. We cannot put those together. So this is called a complex number. Complex number. It has a real part and an imaginary part. So if we look at how numbers work in our whole number system, all numbers are complex numbers. Seven can be considered a complex number because it could also be written zero I, seven plus zero I. It has no imaginary part. It's just seven. It's got, you know, so it could be written. So all numbers can be complex numbers. And underneath that, you have the real numbers and the imaginary numbers that fit underneath complex numbers. Imaginary numbers have a B that's not equal to zero. So it does have the BI part. And it may have an A. Pure imaginary numbers, A is equal to zero, and you only have the BI. So you only have the imaginary part without the real part. Real numbers are A plus zero I. You do not have an imaginary part. And under that, you have irrational numbers and rational numbers, and you have integers inside the rational numbers, and inside integers are whole numbers, and inside whole numbers are natural numbers. And the natural numbers are just the ones that we count with zero. I mean, one, two, three, four don't even include zero. So just a quick review of our, our number system that we use. So let's look at simplifying these expressions. And the final answer has to be A plus B I. So we have two different numbers we're adding together here. Two numbers are adding together. And this is the real part. The 11, negative 11 and the 9 are both real numbers. The 3i and the 2i are imaginary. We can only combine like terms. So negative 11 plus 9 is negative 2. 3i plus 2i would be 5i. That would be the answer. We add the real numbers together. We add the imaginary numbers together. Negative 2 plus 5i. Let's look at another example over here. 4 plus i plus 7 minus 5i. So this is two numbers, two complex numbers we're adding together. The real part is the 4 and the 11. When we add, I mean, 4 and the 7. So when we add those together, we get 11. Then we've got plus i, and we add a negative 5i. So that makes it negative 4i. And that's our final answer. We cannot simplify it any further than that. That's as far as we can go. All right, let's look at number 11 here. 7 minus 2i minus, we're subtracting this time. To negative 2i minus positive 6i. I'm going to let you put that in the chat. What do you think the final answer is here for this one? 7 minus 2i, subtracting from that the number 2 plus 6i. See what you can do with that. Put your answer in the chat. Remember, this is subtraction. We're not adding this time.
You got a real portion and you have an imaginary portion. I see a couple of numbers in there and they're very different in the chat. Up oh, now I've got three different answers in the chat. All right, starting to fill up with we're getting some some of the same repeats now. All right, let's look at it. So the real portion is seven and two, and we're subtracting seven minus two. Okay, so five is the real portion of our answer. So five is should be the first part. Then we have negative 2i, and we're subtracting a positive 6i. 2i minus 6i more is negative 8i. So it's 5 minus 8i. All right, good job. I saw that a lot in the chat. 5 minus 8i. Don't forget you're subtracting. So you have a negative, and you're subtracting 6 more from the negative. All right, let's go over here. This has three different numbers. We have 6i, and from the 6i, we're subtracting 14 minus i, and then we're adding 5 minus 3i. See what you can do with that one. Put those answers in the chat. We got a minus and then a plus, and we have three different numbers that we're combining here. 6i, 14 minus i, 5 minus 3i. Ignore that 12. That's just the problem number. It has nothing to do with the solution. Little trick here. You got to, you, you can subtract first or you can add first. It doesn't matter because order of operations say left to right or either one doesn't really matter. All right. We got some people with some, some answers there. Looks like everyone's coming up with the same answer so far. I haven't checked to see if it's right. I haven't done this one yet. But I'm seeing a lot of the same answer. Well, all right, if you're working on that, keep going. So we, we don't have a real portion of the first number. 6i is just pure imaginary. So we can skip that. That's a 0. 0 minus 14. Right? So we have the... Minus 14, so negative 14 is our first real number. And then we're adding 5 to that. So negative 14 plus 5 is a negative 9. All right, that's what I saw in the chat. Everybody had a negative 9. Then we have a 6i minus a negative i. 6 minus a negative. So that means we're adding. So we've got 7i. And then 7i, we're adding negative 3i. So that means we're subtracting from that. So that gives us a plus 4i. Good job. You guys are on top of that. You were killing that in the chat there. Okay. Multiplying complex numbers. Remember, i squared, uh, I squared equals negative 1. Because that will become important when you're working with solving multiplication. We're multiplying these. So 2i times 8 minus 3i. So we have to distribute 2i minus 8 is 16i. 2i minus negative 3i. So 2 minus negative 3 is negative 6. i times i is i squared. So it's not simplified yet because this is the same as 16i times negative 6 times negative 1, because i squared is the same as negative 1. So negative 6 times negative 1 is a positive 6. So it's a positive 6 plus 16i. We like to write them. The real portion goes first, and then the imaginary portion. So this is the same as 16i plus 6. So when we write it, we turn it around and say 6 plus 16i. All right, let's try another one over here. Negative i times negative 2 plus 10i. 
All right, I'll let you try that one. This is just like this one over here. We only have just the pure imaginary outside the parentheses. So you've got to multiply that by what's inside the parentheses. Let's see what you can come up with. So we all are working on that already. I'm going to start writing it out here as we're doing this. Negative i times negative 2. So a negative times a negative. That's a positive 2i first. Then I take negative i times positive 10i. So a negative times a positive 10i squared. So working on it. Okay, I'm seeing some tens. I see a negative 10. I see 2i. All right. So negative 10 times i squared. So this is the same as 2i time or minus 10 times negative 1. Because i squared is equal to negative 1. So that's the same as 2i. Negative 10 times negative 1 is plus 10. So we would generally write that with the real portion first. And they're both positives. The 2 is a positive, the 10 is a positive. So 10 plus 2i. All right, very good. All right, let's look at one of these. This is a little bit more work because now it's two complex numbers. This was just a pure imaginary times a complex number. So two complex numbers. So we've got to distribute both numbers. So the 7 first, 7 times 4 is 28 7 times negative i is negative 7i i times 4 is plus 4i and then i times negative i is negative i squared oh all right let's see how that goes so 28 negative 7i plus 4i so that we can combine those those are both i's but i squared is not the same not the same as i's we can't combine it with the i's because it's an i squared that's different minus i squared minus negative one right because i squared equals negative one so we're subtracting negative one which means we're adding one because that simplifies to plus one so this equals 29 minus 3i. That's our final answer. We had 28, and then we added this one on the end, 29 minus 3i. Good job, Anya. Anya already had that ahead of me in the chat. All right, one left. This is the last problem we're doing today, and then we're going to look at our assignment in formative, and then we'll be out of here. All right, work on that one. See, I'm going to work it slowly so some of y'all get ahead of me in the chat. Two times negative five. Well, two times negative five. That's negative 10. Two times negative three i. So two times negative three is negative six. And it has an i. Now I'll distribute the second number, the negative 4i times negative 5. Negative 4, negative 5, plus 20i. And negative 4i times negative 3i. Negative times a negative. 4 times 3i times i, i squared. So that simplifies to negative 10. These are like terms, negative 6i and 20i would be 14 positive, 14i. And then this is the same, plus 12 times negative 1. 12 times negative 1. So when I take 12 times negative 1, that's, that's minus 12. Same as minus 12. So negative 10 minus 12, negative 22 plus 14i. All right, is that what you got? Oh, yeah, a lot of y'all got that. Negative 22 plus 14i. You guys are killing it. Great. My twos look very different from one another. All right, negative 22 plus 14i. Okay, I want to look at our assignment informative. 
All right. So when you go to Google Classroom, the assignment's posted there. You go there, and what you have is 12 problems right here. 12 problems, just like the ones we've been working right here. Uh, these first are adding. So you add these two complex numbers, subtract these two complex numbers, subtract these. Uh, I to the fourth, what's that equal in its simplest term? I to the 23rd, what does that equal in its simplest term? Um, then you got some multiplication like we were just doing where you have a pure imaginary number times a complex number or two complex numbers multiplied. This is multiplied. This is squared, which means it's multiplied by itself. Negative seven plus I times negative seven plus I. So it's really just two complex numbers. Uh, here's three plus five I times three minus five I. Then we have another addition one and finally one last multiplication one. So that's it. 12 things are worth three points each. That's due Sunday. Uh, Friday, we'll review this again in a little different way. I'll go through with a, a spreadsheet on that. I mean, a, a slideshow on that. We'll look at it a little differently on Friday. Uh, so that way you get another look at it. But if you feel confident now and you want to go ahead and jump in and get this knocked out before Friday, super. That's wonderful. But Friday is an A day. So we do meet on Friday this week. Uh, so that's the next time we'll be together as a group. But otherwise, uh, good work. You guys are killing it in the chat, working those problems out. So I will let you go enjoy. I've got, uh, I've already got a screenshot here of everyone here. So I will get attendance off of that. We'll be good for that. And I will see you guys on Friday. Have a, have a wonderful week.